Good morning, everybody. Hello, Bethel Church. How are you today? It's lovely, isn't it? It's a lovely, lovely Sunday morning today. It is a cracker. Yeah. Little bit cold, but great, sunny, lovely. Yeah. And uh, hope you are feeling sunny and lovely too. Um, I'm sure you are. I'm sure they are. They are lovely. They are lovely they and are sunny. They are lovely, Joel. But whether they feel that is not necessarily <laughs> the same. They may just feel cold. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we'll stop having a conversation and come back to you. Good morning. Um, uh, welcome to Bethel Church online. Bethel Church Carmarthen. Uh, if you don't know us, uh, that's who we are. Um, we personally are Joel and Del Solway, uh, part of the leadership team of Bethel Church. And it's great to... Um, be in your front rooms or wherever you are this morning. Trust yeah. that uh, you are uh, connecting to us, already feeling blessed by a, uh, an amazingly generous and faithful God. Absolutely. What we got coming up today? Well, there's lots of things coming up today, isn't there? There's, there's worship, yeah. isn't there? We're going to um, mark the passing of uh, Prince Philip uh, yeah. in a while. Um, we're going to hear Tim speak to us. Uh, mm -hmm. Jan's going to read to us. There's a few things going on. So. Yeah. Um, We'll get to all that in a while. Yeah, let's pray first, shall let's we? Let's pray first yeah. and then we'll and then... go from there. Absolutely. Cool. Okay, let's just pray. Father God, I just thank you for this um, this wonderful Sunday morning. I thank you, Father, that we can gather again, though it be online, Lord, we can gather again in your name as your people. Mm -hmm. And Father, this morning, as Tim prepares his sermon to bring to us, Father, as um, you have deposited your word in his heart to give, mm -hmm. I just pray your blessing upon him. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father, that he would speak your word boldly. Father, I pray that um, we would have hearts to receive what you have in store for us today, for what you want to tell us today your gentle whisper or your bold voice however you wish to speak to us i pray that you would open our hearts um to receive it today for your glory amen, amen. cool all cool. right should we start with so, the song let's start with the song over to uh Lowry and the worship team
thank you, Laurie and the team for, for uh, worship this morning. We'll be hearing more from uh, from the team later on. Uh, we're just going to stop for a little while mm -hmm. now and just um, just uh, commemorate, remember, um, and uh, pay our respects to uh, His Royal Highness Duke of Edinburgh, who passed away on, on Friday. Friday. Yeah, just uh, just gone. You will, I'm sure, have heard that, seen it and heard and seen some of the tributes that already are um ha have been have been made to him um but yeah an amazing amazing guy by the sounds yeah, of it absolutely. and um obviously all my life i've known nothing other than he and the queen standing next to each other that's right um that's right. married for well 73 70 years 73 years wow. amazing that's longer <laughs> than most of us would would probably end up living never yeah. mind being married Bless so, him. Um, well, it was 99 years old. Wow. 99, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Only a few weeks, seven weeks, was it? Short of his 100th birthday or yeah. something. But, Do you um... think he'd have had a birthday card from the Queen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never thought about that. Uh, thank you, dear, for that. Um, in this point, um, I'm sure he would have, like every year. Um, anyway, anyway, we would like to honour his, his we life We would like to honour his memory and yeah. his life. Um, and, and to pray for the royal family as they uh, mourn his loss as well, yeah. and the nation, and actually countries of the world, I believe, also, aren't they? Yeah, Just, of course. Yeah. Particularly in the Commonwealth and, uh, yeah, lots and lots of nations yeah. around, yeah, the, around the world. A so. huge sphere of influence, obviously, didn't did. he? they And, did. Um, yeah, definitely a hole um, is left by his passing. Yes, in lots of areas. So, um, what we thought we'd do this morning is we're, we're, we have prepared a video with a prayer on it, um, the words are on there and we're just inviting you to uh, pray along with that yeah. as we uh, play the video in a while. But just before that, we're going to leave 15, 20 seconds of uh, space just for each of us to uh, remember, rejoice, give thanks, uh, whatever you feel it's appropriate to do. Remember the, the, the Queen and the Royal Family, yeah. whatever you feel it's appropriate to do. Uh, let's just do that for 15, 20 seconds. And, and then Ariam is going to run uh, the, the video of the prayer. Feel free to join in with that prayer uh, as it's played. And, uh, and then it'll be back to us. Father God, this morning we give you thanks for the life of Prince Philip. We thank you for his example to us of loyalty and devotion to his family, people and duty. We see in his example echoes of your devotion and love towards us. We thank you that he, like you, put the crown of others before his own. Today we lift before you the royal family as they mourn. We pray for the Queen in particular, who has lost her husband and friend, her strength and stay. Would you comfort her, grant her peace, be her rock and strong tower? We pray for the wider royal family who have lost a father, the head of the household. We again pray your comfort and strength over them, that they would know you as their everlasting father. We pray that you would continue to bless the Queen and Royal Family with wisdom and guide them in your love and grace. As people around the world celebrate the life of Prince Philip and are moved by his passing, we pray that they would find hope, confidence and strength in your goodness, grace, mercy and love. Amen. There we go. Um, Thank you thanks for joining, for joining with yeah. us in that, um, in that prayer. Just as we pray together. Um, let's continue to pray for the royal family um, over the coming days and just uh, hold them up in prayer and uh, bless them as they uh, go through what will be uh, a difficult time for them. Um, 
Right, so we're going to go back to worship in a moment, are we not? Yeah, we are. But first of all, let's say good morning to a few people yes. who we know are tuned in this morning. Who's we, with us? Well, Ro was with us, and Ro she is thinks the same as me, if you she, read in the comments. Yeah, yeah. poor yes, Ro. that's very worrying <laughs> for you, Ro. Um, and uh, who else is with us? Anne Mansfield's with us. Good morning, Anne. Yeah. Shoe and Car, good morning. Mother-in-law. Mom. Morning, Mom. <laughs> um, morning, Liz. Sophie is with us as host this morning on the uh, website, which is yeah. great. Uh, Josh, Alwyn and Brenda, uh, we're there. And uh, Tim is too. And Karis and Adrian. Good morning. And Bridget. Morning all. Yeah. And, We've um, got Stephen and Brewer on Facebook as well. And Margaret okay. Jones as well. Well done. Yeah. Yes, we've sorry, we, we're struggling to connect to all of our channels this morning, so we can't see everybody who's no, online. But, but if you're welcome. with us, then welcome. Uh, yeah. And uh, whoever you are, wherever you are, you are very welcome. Yes. Um, so we're going to go into worship now with lowering the team again. And then what have we got coming after that? Well, uh, straight after worship, actually, we have a message from the Prime Minister. Um, not not personally, to us personally, to us. <laughs> but um, it was his Easter message last weekend, and uh, we thought it was very encouraging so we thought we'd share it with you it was only by chance really that we came across it um, a friend of ours shared it with us uh, so we thought we'd share it this morning so enjoy worship and then listen enjoy boris yeah enjoy boris cool. <laughs> indeed Thanks, good morning bethel thank you for joining with us uh, we're going to lead you in a worship set now um, and i'll just pray for us uh, as we go into this time of worshiping god together Father God, I thank you um, that we've just celebrated Easter, we've just celebrated um, your resurrection um, and the love that you have for us, uh, that you you died on the cross for us, and I thank you for that. Um, and I pray, though, as we go into the weeks after Easter, that we would just keep that in our minds, um, that it's not just for Easter, it's for all the days of the year, um, every hour and every minute. Um, and I just pray that we would we would live resurrection lives. We would remember the cross and we would remember what you've done for us and why you did it. Um, and I pray that we would just um, we would just be filled with your love um, and with your presence. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh 
lay down all I am, making room for you. Lord, I'm ready to open up my heart, to receive not in part, but the fullness of who you are. Lord, I'm ready. I just want more. I just want more. Happy Easter to everyone who is celebrating today. I know that for many people that means chocolate eggs and the Easter bunny and hot cross buns and all the rest of it, and I will certainly be joining in. But let's not lose sight of the fact that this is Christianity's most important festival, and that while churches are open, the ongoing coronavirus restrictions mean that once again it won't be possible for many Christians to mark Easter in the way that they would like. But if there's one thing British Christians have shown us this year, it's that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life, not just today, but every day. His teachings and the message of his death and resurrection permeate through every aspect of daily life. That's why I've lost count of the number of church leaders and congregations who have stepped up to support us all in these very challenging times. Millions of Good Samaritans, each of them showing what loving thy neighbour as thyself really looks like in 21st century Britain. And having done all that during the darkest days of the pandemic, churches across the UK are now helping us light the path out of it by opening their doors as vaccination centres. It's really very moving to see it. This has been a very tough 12 months, but as ever, the arrival of Easter brings with it new hope. And this year, more than ever, it brings the promise of brighter days ahead for us all. So, stay safe, keep following the rules, and have a very happy Easter. Thank you, Boris. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we just thought we'd play that to you um because I, I was really encouraged by it and we trust uh, you were too encouraged that he has been so positive about the uh, impact of churches yeah. over the last year, um, but also about um, the message of Jesus and yeah. uh, uh, and the fact that um, it's such a positive one and one of, uh, of so much good. And uh, 
it was really encouraging for me to hear our Prime Minister speak like that and um, just use it as an, an opportunity to pray for Boris uh, and I can't, it's terrible we'll call the Prime Minister Boris. by his first name yeah. because he's Boris I don't know why <laughs> um, so for Boris and the rest of the cabinet and indeed the government as they lead Absolutely. us and in Wales to um, Mark Drayford and uh, and the uh, assembly yeah so yeah um, hope you're encouraged by yeah. that we enjoyed it yes and thank you to Laurie Anna and Bill for leading us in a lovely lovely time of worship this morning Diolch boys Indeed. Uh, actually, it was Bill who posted the um, the, uh, the Boris. Boris video yeah, to us did. as well. So thank double you, thanks, Bill. Um, <laughs> right. We have some job. announcements, don't we, this morning? We do have a few. Yeah. Um, so so this week, um, kids are back in school tomorrow, obviously, and then schools are back in full f- flow this week in Wales as well for the first time. Are we going to pray for uh, kids now before... or will we do that now? Oh, should we do that now? Yeah. Yeah, no, let's pray for yeah. kids now. Are you going for it? Me? Oh, no, kids, you oh, usually do that. Do you... I can do it, no problem. <laughs> it's just make it short. Division of labour. <laughs> uh, yeah, Father, we just remember our children. We thank you for them, Lord, as we consider the fact that uh, this week they will all be back in school. Yeah. Um, something that, uh, bizarrely, they haven't done for a long mm. time. And, Lord, we just lift them before you. We ask that you would lift any anxiety from them. Lord, we pray that they would have a real sense of excitement uh, at returning to school yeah. and not, not anxiety or worry at all, Father. Lord, we just pray that you would go before them, that you would prepare the way for each and every one of them. Father, and as our kids return, I pray that they would return with a new vigour and a new uh, joy uh, in each other's company and a new uh, desire to learn all that they can. Uh, Father, we just bless them. Thank you for them. Thank you for the blessing that they are to us. Uh, Lord, we just honour them for their childlike faith and love. And Lord, we just ask that you would bless them as they return to school and just um, just allow them to enjoy that experience mm. afresh. Amen. Amen. Is that short enough? Yeah, Good. but you forgot cool. to pray for teachers. Oh, so remember to teachers. pray for teachers in your own time. Sorry, <laughs> we love teachers. you, teachers. <laughs> um, anyway, so... The end of the Easter break means that things go back to normal as well um, in church. So prayer meetings and house groups. Uh, sorry, connect, connect groups. groups. Oh, Tim is going to hate oh, that. Sorry, Tim. Did you say the oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Connect groups and prayer meetings are back to normal. So that's our Monday night focus out prayer at 8pm yeah. via Zoom. Um, Wednesday night connect also via Zoom, and then Thursday, and I've got to get this right or my mother will not be impressed. On Thursday, the ladies' lunchtime prayer is back on on Thursday this week, the 15th, but it's at a new time. Right, what's the new time? The new time is 11.30. Just check the chats, right? Because I'll have got it wrong and they'll all be correcting me in the chats. I believe it's Thursday, 11.30, new time. So it's not lunchtime prayer anymore. It's It's just before lunchtime prayer. (laughs) Yeah, lemonsies prayer. Yes, it's between (laughs) elevensies and lunch Lunch. prayer. (laughs) But that's too long. Ladies prayer. So ladies prayer. Cool. Anything else happening? Um, What's coming up? Return to church. Return to church. Hopefully return to church. We are planning for a return to church early in May. So uh, look look forward to um, look look out for those announcements and for further information yeah, on that one. Absolutely, and then the Alpha course, of Alpha course. course, of course, of course, the Alpha course, of course. Um, so that is going to be an online course starting on the sixth of May, um, at seven pm. Um, look out for the video at the end. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's going to be a video at the end, and also if you're interested, um, you can send an email to alpha at bethel info alpha at bethel.info but that too will be on the the video later on yeah absolutely sorry were you going to say all that did i interrupt you no you didn't sorry no that's fine it's not as if you're not used to it is it yeah no cool yeah right what's next don't know we were doing well up until now (laughs) time wise we may just have blown it (laughs) uh so next is uh tim tim's gonna come and share with us from god's word so uh, yeah after i know oh yes so there's a reading first uh, Jan's going to read to us, relevant to Tim's word to us this morning. Uh, Tim's beginning a new series on Resurrection Lives, and uh, we're going to enjoy the first of those this morning with Tim. Um, we can't, You can't see what we can see on Zoom. I can see Tim still pacing back and forward, bless him, this morning. So, um, Tim, we just bless you this morning yeah. with God's peace and anointing Absolutely. as you come and speak to us. But just before you, 
uh, brother, we're going to listen to uh, Jan read a portion of God's scripture. Hello, good morning, Bethel. I'm going to read John chapter 20 from the NRSV. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, Joel and, uh, and Del uh, as well. Good morning, Bethel Church. Good morning, uh, friends and uh, church family uh, this morning. It's great to be on line with you. Well, we've had the royal family. We've had the prime minister. And uh, now you've got me. So I'm bringing things back to, back to normal. Uh, it's great to be with you this morning. I'm looking out over um, through my, the window of my study. We've just had a, a snow flurry just a minute ago and now it's uh, bright sunshine. So it's a mixed bag at the at the moment and we've had a mixed bag this morning. Boom, boom. Christianity is the only religion in the world that stands or falls on whether its founder was raised from the dead. You can speak to any Buddhist and none of them would claim that Buddha rose from the grave. You can speak to any Jew and they will tell you that Abraham did not rise from the dead. In fact, Genesis 25 tells us where he was buried. No Muslim will tell you that uh, Muhammad rose from the dead. He died at the age of 61 in 632 AD. And thousands of Muslims go to Saudi Arabia to 
uh, look at his bones every every year. The bones of the philosophers of of uh, Greek, they they are there, they are there in, in in the ground. Only Christianity claims that the founder of their faith, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead and is alive. Jesus is alive. And this morning, I want us just to examine the significance of that for today, for the 11th of April, 2021. How does the resurrection of Jesus affect our West Wellian life? How does it affect our tomorrow or the next week or, or next month or in five years time? How does it affect us the apostle paul in when he writes to the church in Corinth in first corinthians 15 he's he's writes to them about the resurrection of jesus in fact he a lot of his letters are are wrapped up with that great theme of the resurrection of jesus and he he says that he stakes all of his christian faith on the resurrection of jesus in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14, he states this, that if Christ had not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. He's saying if it's, if it's not true, then your faith is, is futile. I love the amplified version that gives it a more flowering um, meaning, really, in, um, in verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 15 that says this if christ has not been raised your faith is worthless and powerless mere delusion you are still in your sins and under the control and penalty of sin and he goes on to say and if 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 that's the case in verse 19 he says then we are then we are of all people most miserable and to be pitied but then he goes on in verse 20 by saying but christ has indeed been raised from the dead he is reconciled to the father now we've been thinking about the resurrection this week and i've been thinking do we deeply think about the resurrection in us I wonder if it's just become so familiar. I wonder if the whole Easter story of the death and the resurrection of Jesus has become so familiar to us that we have failed to appreciate what it really means. John Updike in his Easter poem regarding the resurrection says this, let us not mock God with metaphor analogy, sidestepping transcendence, making of the event a parable, a sign, a sign painted in a faded credulity of earlier ages. Let us walk through the door. The stone is, is rolled back, not papier mâché, not a stone in a story, but the vast rock of materiality in the, in the slow grinding of time will eclipse for each of us the wide light of day. The resurrection is more than an event. It's, it's not a parable. It's not just a, an uplifting, feel good, uh, get hold of escapism story. The resurrection of Jesus is true. And it changes everything. It changes life. It transforms life. It speaks of the of salvation. Without the resurrection, we would still be in our sins, Paul says. There's no salvation without a living Jesus. A living Savior. Today, we are, we are saved because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. His work is complete. It's a completed work. 
sin, death, and hell have been overcome. Anybody excited this morning? The Bible says that they've been swallowed up forever. It speaks, the resurrection speaks of our past, it speaks of our future, but actually the resurrection of Jesus speaks to us now of living resurrection lives, living in the present, in the moment of resurrection lives. And I want to apply five things this morning, not just about our future, but our, but our present, not just about our past, but our, our very existence here today. Because the resurrection speaks clearly and loudly today. First of all, because of Jesus' uh, resurrection today, you don't need to be afraid. Let me say that again. You don't need to be afraid. The verses following on from what Jan read to us this morning, we see there the picture of the disciples, and they, are, they have run, and they are hiding behind a locked set of doors because they are frightened, they are fearful. And in verse 19 of, of John chapter 20, we see that Jesus comes into their fear, comes into their place, comes in among them, alongside them. And he says to them, in the place of fear, peace be with you. We all know that, that fear is crippling. It's it's a crippling way of life to, to live. It grabs hold of you. It ties you up. It locks you up. And into that place, the resurrection of Jesus speaks today, speaks at this very moment and reminds us of the great truth and a great fact that if God has conquered even death, then he can surely take care of everything this side of the grave as well. Anybody believe that this morning? There is nothing more final than death, is there? Death has a 100% a uh, record. Nothing more devastating than death. But Jesus has conquered the grave. Christ has conquered death. And because of the resurrection, he can be trusted with whatever fear you're holding on to. Because of the resurrection, because he has conquered our greatest enemy, he can, he can take hold of that, that fear that you are holding and bring life to it. What is that? Maybe it's the case of uh, the, your finances. Well, he can be trusted with your finances, even though he, it doesn't seem as if we've got enough. How many of us have known testimony of that, that God can be trusted with our finances? He can be trusted with our job, even though it's not what you expected. He can be trusted with our relationships, even, even at the moment, if they seem like a complete nightmare. He can be trusted. He can be trusted. He can be trusted because if, if God uh, can raise Jesus from the dead, he can take care of you and I. Today, you don't need to be afraid. Are you afraid today? Is there something grabbing hold of you today? You know, the sleepless nights, the anxiety, the trouble. And look, they're all very real. But so is the resurrection of Jesus. So is the Jesus that comes to you and says, peace be with you. Today, you need not be afraid. Secondly, because of the resurrection of Jesus, today, you can have a fresh start. Anybody excited by that today? That you can have a fresh start. Boy, do I need a fresh start. The resurrection speaks of that last week we were really blessed by having pastor malcolm duncan speak to us and it was a fantastic word and i'm just picking up on on something that that he said 
in John chapter 20 and verse 1. The gospel, uh, John writes and gives reference to that the resurrection happened on the first day of the week. He didn't say it happened to fall on, on a Sunday. He's saying that resurrection is a new start, is a new day, is a beginning of a new day, a new world, a new creation, as Malcolm spoke about last week. And John is revealing that the resurrection gives us the ability, gives us the, the understanding that we have a brand new start with him, that we have a brand new time, a fresh start, that on the cross, he forgave all the things that separated us from him. And now his resurrection life, his life to live brings us into a new relationship with him. It's a new start. It's a fresh start. The death of the past, the history of, of, of our lives has, has just been cleared. It's been wiped clean. You get a fresh start with Jesus. And every day is resurrection day for us. Listen to Paul again as he writes, this time to uh, a church in, in Colossae. And in Colossians 1, 21 and 22, we read this. Even though you were once distant from him, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions, he reconnected you back to himself. He released his supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of his own body as the sin payment on your behalf so that you would dwell in his presence. And now there is nothing between you and Father God, for he sees you as holy, flawless, and restored. Amen. That's you this morning. That's me this morning. If we've given our lives to Christ, if we have uh, come to him, we've been given a fresh start and God is the God who continually gives us fresh starts. We see it right through scripture. We see it right through with his hand upon the children of Israel about fresh starts. We have a God of the fresh start. In John chapter 20, verse 15, Mary sees Jesus and she thinks he's a gardener. And in a way, he is a bit like a gardener. He's up early in, in the half light of, of, of the day and he's uh, tending to the garden, bringing all sorts of possibilities to the new creation. Giving the possibility of a fresh start. And he turns to Mary and he says, Mary, why? Or he says, why are you crying? Who is it you're, you're looking for? And then he says to her and she cries. Rabboni, Rabboni. And in that moment, we read that uh, it, it seems as if she, she runs to him and she flings herself of, of, uh, at Jesus. She grabs hold of him to the extent of that. He says, hey, don't, don't hold on to me. In that moment, that sadness, that disappointment, that heartache, that pain, is removed and transformed into joy because Jesus is the one who gives us a fresh start. There's a fresh start. And that's an encouragement for maybe someone here today. There's a, this is an encouragement for someone today where you may, may think, oh, you know what? I've, I've, I've screwed up. I've let things go. I've, I've, I'm not in the right place. Well, resurrection is all about a fresh start. And Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me ask you, run to him today. Run to him, grab hold of him today so that he allows you to have a fresh start. Believer, maybe you're up against it this morning. Maybe your back's up against the wall. Maybe things are going on in life and you've let things just go a little bit uh, uh, out of hand and, and so on. Well, let me tell you, Jesus is the, the person of the fresh start. He is the resurrection and the life. 
And here was Mary. She, uh, she was a woman with a bleak past. She was a, a, a woman with a, a terrible history. But Jesus gave her a fresh start. I love Psalm 50, uh, Psalm 30 in verse 5. It says, you know, weeping may endure for a night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. And I'm sure that was Mary's God. Weeping may endure for a night, but a shout comes. A shout of joy comes in the morning. Friend, God is, is waiting for you to run to him. He's waiting for you to grab hold of him. And this morning, you know, whoever you are, you may be in leadership. You may be you, in church leadership. You may be uh, this someone who's been a faithful, uh, regular attender and member of, of Bethel Church for many, many years. You may be just someone that just uh, over this last year has connected online. And I want to say to you today that the, Jesus stands there and he calls you by name. How will you respond to that today? Will you run to him? Will you grab him? Will you throw yourself at him? And in doing so, you will experience joy instead of sadness. Is there sadness in your life? Is there a heartache? Is there pain? Very real emotions. The joy of the Lord is our strength and you can experience a fresh start. So that leads me to the third thing that, that the resurrection of Jesus speaks of. Undoubtedly, it speaks of hope. There is hope. Not just a hope to come because obviously the resurrection deals with death and it is the first fruit of the of, of uh, the the final resurrection, but it actually speaks of hope that we can live out of and by today. There is hope. Again, Malcolm picked up on this last week, where where John particularly writes, while it was still dark, in verse one of John chapter twenty. Don't miss those words. Don't miss that description. While it was still dark. It was a dark point. It was a dark moment. But hope is about to burst in. Hope bursts in. Darkness is defeated. Hope bursts in out of despair. Theologian Frank uh, uh, Bircher says this. Resurrection means the worst thing is never the last thing. Be encouraged by that. And in this account. In the half light, Mary yeah, can just about make out that something is as wonderful as happened. She, she notices the stone has been rolled away of the, the entrance of the tomb. And the stone is rolled away, not in order that, that Jesus can get out, but that we can look in. And every day of our lives today, we look at an empty tomb we look into an empty tomb and it reveals to us that we live in a new day in a new time in a new experience and when we begin to to understand that we begin to know that the old world has lost its limitations because jesus has reversed the irreversible we celebrate hope New Testament writers celebrated hope, and in in fact, uh, Paul would, would would taunt it by uh, by 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 taunting, "Oh, death, where is your victory? Where is your sting?" But the hope is not just for something to come; it's a hope for today. It's knowing that at this moment, that in every hopeless situation. The hope of the risen Christ is there. In every situation, in every circumstance, in every relationship, in every addictive, compulsive behavior, you can't stop. Hope is there. Hope stands there. Hope has arrived 
and hope is real. And Jesus reverses the irreversible. He is able to do that. He's able to do that in your life, in your circumstance this morning. Fourthly, Jesus' resurrection reveals to us your life as a purpose. Every single one of us, your life has a purpose. The accounts of the, the, um, the Easter morning by the different um, uh, writers in the Gospels speak about them hurrying. Speak about people running, urgently moving from one place to another. Why is that? Because suddenly there was a passion amongst them. There was an excitement amongst them. There was a purpose amongst them. We, in the, in the account that Jan read earlier, we see Mary Magdalene running. We see Peter. We see John. And they're running. There's purpose. There's, there's meaning there's, in their lives because their lives have been changed by the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection gives them a new dynamic. The resurrection gives them a new commission. When Jesus appears in behind those locked doors uh, to the disciples, he says to them in John 20, 21 and 22, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Then he breathed in them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And in the same way, and in the same purpose, and in the same mission like those early disciples were filled with the holy spirit and sent and joining him in mission so it is for you and i today we are commissioned by god to bring the same hope to the world you're a hope carrier this morning i'm a hope carrier this morning the hope of, of bringing forgiveness and restoration resurrection of Jesus brings hope to people's lives we have a Jesus that is alive we have a God that is alive we have a God that is active and and working in our lives he's working before us he's working behind us he's working alongside us you and I are hope carriers of the resurrected Jesus on the words that that uh, uh, that uh, were that Jesus read from the scroll in the temple and he was speaking of himself, that, that very mission. You know, it's, it's election time in Wales, and we've had a load of stuff through the, through the, the door and different manifestos to, to points to look at. Well, this is our manifesto this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is on us because he has anointed us to proclaim good news to the poor. He sends us to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We have a purpose. You have a purpose. You are not an accident. You haven't been saved just to, just to uh, uh, enjoy the ride, as it were. God has called you and has a calling upon your life for a purpose, for his kingdom, for his glory, for his, for his honor, and for his fame. And fifthly, and We'll finish here. Jesus' resurrection speaks to us, reveals to us, you can have power. We can live with the power of God in our lives. Jesus being raised from the dead is not only about death being defeated and our resurrection to come, which I have said. But it, or even go into heaven at, at some point when, when we die, it includes that. But also the power of the resurrected Jesus is available to us today. It's about the power of the resurrected Jesus being available to us today. Romans 8, 11 says this, that in the same spirit, that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us who put our trust in him and it gives life to our mortal bodies. And then Paul speaks in, in Ephesians. He, taught, he speaks to the church in Ephesus 
And Paul longs for his readers to know. And he says this in verse 19, that the immeasurably and limited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power is in us who believe. Today, rest in the fact that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Who believe? Lives in me. Who believes? God's power, the same power, lives in you. We have a tendency to measure what God can produce in us based on what we can produce in our in our own selves by our on our own. But that leads us often down to a, a path of, of discouragement because that's not what God says. That's not what God says about you today. For the disciples, think about this for a moment. For them, none of their circumstances changed. The Roman authorities still ruled. There was still a price on their heads. But in another sense, everything in their life changed. And I'm sure as Jesus stood in that room, in that locked room, and as he came and as he, he, he displayed and, and uh, conquered their fear and gave them a fresh purpose and a fresh start, I think it, as they stood there, they gradually began to wonder. And they began begin to dawn on them, you know what? If Jesus can do this, if Jesus can, 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 can do that, then I wonder what else he can do. Jesus was raised from the dead. So I wonder what else he can do. There are two, two ways that you and I can look at our lives. The first way is fo focus on all that is wrong, all the inadequacies, all the insecurities, and the sheer dis despair of, of the way life is, is turning out and how we, the things that you face. And if you look at our lives from that perspective, then the resurrection is just something that we hear of, something that is uh, in some way a fairy tale, some Something that is just a, an escapism that makes, oh, yeah, yeah, we tag it along to our, our, our faith. But the other way is of looking at life and our circumstances and our situations and take the resurrection as a starting point. Of Jesus reversing the irreversible. And what God can do. You know, what can God do in your circumstance this morning of his power? And when you look at, at uh, your lives through that lens, then your insecurities, your inadequacies, your sheer despair that, you, that is uh, surrounding you changes. And the resurrection becomes the kind of preview of real life. We are called to live resurrection lives. And if you, by faith, choose to live your life with that perspective and allow the resurrection to soak into you, to permeate within your worries, within your feelings, and discover that, that, that everything can, can look differently when you recognize that the resurrected Christ is with you and saying, peace be with you. Let me tell you, situations will look different. Finances will look different. Jobs will look different. Relationships will look different. Health, ill health will look different. Death looks totally different because of the risen Savior. Every thing becomes brighter. And the future is not only a place of hope, but present is a place of hope and purposes of God. Let's pray.
Thank you, Jesus, that you are alive. And I pray right now that, Lord, we would just have a sense of your, your active work in power in our lives. Lord, I, I, I pray right now for those that are carrying fear. I pray, Lord, flood their lives right now with your peace. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for, for those that are that are just lost their way, that are seeking a fresh start. I pray, Lord, that they would know a fresh start in, in their life. I pray, oh God, that they would know that they are forgiven, released, and set free. I pray for that in their life this morning. I pray for those, Lord, that, that need, a, need a light, need some hope in their life. Well, Lord, you specialize in hope and you burst light and hope into the darkness that surrounds us while it was still dark. And Lord, I pray, Lord, into that darkness this morning, people's lives, people's circumstances, real circumstances, dark circumstances, we pray, Lord, bring hope, bring light, and bring life in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that we would all know that we are a people of purpose and a people of power and a people that have a, a calling and anointing upon our lives, a people that, are, that know God, that know you, that know your leading, that know that nothing is impossible for you. So, Lord, we just pray this now upon people's lives, wherever they are. It's not by might, nor by power, but it's by your spirit. So, Lord, Holy Spirit, just fall afresh upon us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bless you, church. Amen. Thank you. I'm unmuted, sorry. Uh, Thank you, Tim, so much for this morning, um, for your encouragement to us, and um, and just an awesome sermon, yeah. an awesome reminder of the power of Christ in us. Yeah. Um, as some of you know, I'm the I'm the kids leader in Bethel Church, and I often find myself telling the kids that um, we have a a, a, um, a superpower <laughs> as Christians, and um, it, it's just um, yeah, Tim's sermon has just really reminded me. And um, I hope you follow my thoughts on this, <laughs> um, that living the Christian life without knowing the power of the resurrection is like a superhero living without using their superpower. And we've got to choose sometimes to use that superpower. We've got to choose to live in that resurrection life that uh, Tim has um, opened up to us again this morning. Yeah. Because um, it really is supernatural and it really is um, the same power that conquered the grave um lives in us so let's let's use it church yeah don't don't let it pass you by no go deeper absolutely yeah we find it uh it's funny isn't it as christians when we go to funerals we find it easy to differentiate between what it means for us as a as a christian mm -hmm. at a funeral and what it means for those who don't know uh, christ at a funeral because we know that there's something more yeah. but actually applying that in our lives yeah. is so much harder um, but that's the real challenge, and that's what we're encouraged to do by Tim and, of course, every by God day. every day. Every yeah. day. Yeah. It's yeah. all about perspective. Yeah. And uh, getting the right one is tricky, but it's really important for us mm. to love, live a fulfilled and fulfilling life and a yeah. life that really honours and blesses God. Thank cool. you, Tim. Thank Fantastic you, Tim. Sermon. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we just got one more thing to do. Well, two more, really. There's a closing song from uh, the worship team, which is brilliant. We can just go out rejoicing celebrating our resurrection life yeah. and um and then we're going to have the alpha video straight after that um we'll sign off because it's getting uh getting late and say that we will see you soon hopefully and uh that uh, it's been awesome to be with you this morning yeah. bless you 
Take yeah. care and we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Be superheroes this week. <laughs> Bye.
We've all got questions. Why am I here? What's the point? What difference does my life make? Thank you. Why do things that are so bad for us taste so good? Hey Siri, do you pray? I don't have an answer for that. How can I live life to the full? What can I really trust? What's my purpose? What do you think happens when you die? You'll go straight to the gulags. Does anyone hear my prayer? What's for dinner? What will make me happy? Why don't good things last forever? What is God really like? Does anyone else even ask themselves these questions? Hey everyone, I've got an amazing Alpha Online group here. Hi. A better place to ask life's big questions. Ask Alpha.